Okay. We're rolling. We're rolling. Hello. Something that I found interesting from my learnings last week was um, Mendelssohn's three assumptions for success. So I wrote it in my journal. Yep. And number one is target your messages. Number two is assume your target public is uninterested in your messages. And number three... <coughs> Set reasonable mid-range goals and objectives, which I think our group will definitely do. Excellent, excellent. And what about you? I found uh, Robert Chialdini's um, rules of influence the most interesting. I thought um, social proof for us as a client, um, for our client, was really important since um, if we could emphasise the safety in numbers, then um, we'd be able to get more people into the program. Excellent. And what about you? Hi. I'm Anne. Like Flores, I was interested in Cialdini's influence theory, but I like the idea of reciprocity, where it's about um, being able to return the compliment. So in order to sort of practice this theory ethically, um, the textbook says it's about um, identifying objectives and to consider what you can do for the target, but also by identifying that you'll be able to see what you can get from them in return as well. Cool. Very good. We have six people watching us. What do you reckon? Oh, see, look, we have a whole class of us. Aren't we good? Okay, oh, you're no. next. <laughs> okay. Um, so the most interesting part I found from last week um, was the hierarchy of effects theory of persuasion. Yep. It stood out to me the most because I think... <laughs> so distracting. Um, because I think it'll apply, be the most applicable to when we do LPR audit in yep. a couple of weeks. Um, I like that it has like this 12 steps, um, so, so they each apply to um, public relations. That's okay, I can see it. There we go. Yep. Um, when we do our, so our public relations audit and when we are just um, being public relations practitioners in general. Excellent, thank you. Thank you. Next. <laughs> I think that Robert Caldini's ideas about social proof is going to be really Useful when we're making our recommendation on our client's social media. I love social proof. Why is that? Why did that grab you? <laughs> because I think the safety in numbers is going to be an important argument when we maybe make a recommendation that they stop using some forms of social media, considering yep. their lack of engagement. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay, next. <laughs> um, I was also really interested in uh, Caldini's um, influence theory and his six weapons of influence, particularly um, liking, which was the fourth one, um, and how likability plays a role in what people believe, um, which is very important for our organisation, um, and particularly in response to social media, obviously liking is very important from yeah. a PR point of view. Excellent. Okay. Hello. We're honing in. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, from Chapter 2, the theories I found most interesting were emotional intelligence and postmodernist theory. Ah. I liked emotional intelligence because my aim is to work for non-for-profit organisations. Yep. So I think if you better understand your stakeholders, the client and the audience, you communicate better. Excellent. And with um, postmodernist theory, if you... What did I say in my... <laughs> it says... Um, if you combine the two of them, yeah. an understanding of audience and context, yep. and such as like societal changes, which will better equip the practitioner. Fantastic. We've just got a few more to go now. How's it going? Hi. Are you, are you live streaming I'm the live stream? I'm trying to. Ah. I'm trying, but it's not loading. Ah, that's probably uh, our broadband issue. Yeah, maybe. So what's happening? Um, so I really liked the um, elaboration likelihood Model. I didn't really understand it at first until I attended your lecture, Mel, and you oh, explained it so beautifully to me. Excellent. Um, Crawler. <laughs> so I struggled because there was a large like, bit of information in the textbook, um, but what it kind of came down to is there's two ways to receive messages. One is central, which is like you get it directly, and one is peripheral, where you receive it, but you're not really aware of it. Yep. Um, and yeah, that's kind of... The, the Homer Simpson cartoon was really good, I thought. It was. It was yep. fantastic. Yep. I'm a big advocate for Simpsons. Absolutely. More Simpsons in lectures. Excellent. Okie do. Hi. Hi. Um, I thought that Grunig and Hunt's four models for public relations could be useful for our client. Yep. I wrote a bit about it in my journal. But, yeah, I think that because um, they're models for how organisations choose to practice PR, public relations and um, I liked how they all had different, like, approaches to it. I yeah. we could use it for our... For our project. Excellent. 
Thank you. We do have a male in the class. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also thought Rudy Get Hunt stuff was uh, relevant to our client. Do you know we're on mic, guys? Only one at a time. Oh, my God, we're on live stream and everyone just heard me admonishing the class. <laughs> Sorry um, to interrupt. In that our client right now feels like they're going to uh, 2A asymmetrical with trying to persuade people when they'd rather be too asymmetrical and just trying to resolve disputes and be more um, open. Yeah, okay. Is that it? Yep. Yeah, I think that's good. So where are you looking at here? So we're looking at our two-way symmetrical. Okay, and last but absolutely not least... Go away. Go away. <laughs> um, hi, Meg. Hi, Meg. Um, I look like I'm following the crowd a bit with these two with the Greening and Hunt's um, public relations models, but um, from the lecture when I attended the other day. Um, Mel was explaining um, really how the different models work. Um, and you mean you were paying attention? I was, yeah. <laughs> there were three people there, it was kind of easy. <laughs> but um, I really worked out that the press agent model and the public information model um, could really be applied to our client in how they're um, working their public relations and what they're basing it on. Okay. Um, and how we think we could change that for them. Excellent. Well, thank you. This is um this is our class, and um, we're actually experimenting with Meerkat, and to see whether we have any possibilities of using it in a PR sense and getting a, a sense of what Meerkat's all about. So we have nine people watching, and so thanks heaps for uh, letting us experiment with you. We're signing out now. Bye. Bye.